All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to learn a little bit more about NEAR protocol. If you don't know what it is, then perhaps you don't spend enough time on Twitter. And if you don't know what it is yet, you will in the next five minutes. And if you still don't know what it is, then you will in the next six months once they give me a nice big budget to pay for lots of shills on Twitter and beyond. Okay, so originally we were going to have Ilya Polisukin, the co-founder of NEAR protocol, the author of Attention is All You Need, which is one of the original AI papers, give this presentation. However, he couldn't make it, so you're left with me, um, a taller and arguably more handsome man uh, who's also employed at the NEA Foundation. So, first things first, uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a history lesson. So, NEA started in 2017 as an AI company, and up until about three weeks ago, uh, the founders really regretted ever pivoting, um, but now we're back. So uh, what did they do? Well, this is Ilya Polisukin on the right there and Alexander Skidnov on the left. One's Ukrainian, one is Russian. I think that's a bit of a romantic story. Um, if you don't agree, then that is totally fine. But um, this is just a quick aside. This is also Ilya Polisukin uh, stabbing a man in the neck at Ethereum Denver this year. So they tried to pay uh, students all around the world small, small, small amounts of money um, for their work in labeling data in uh, AI large language models and things like that. And they tried to do it with the traditional financial system, but it didn't work. So they tried to do it with crypto. They tried to use Ethereum, they tried to use Bitcoin, and they found it incredibly difficult to explain to anybody the process of setting up a crypto wallet and then having to pay three, four dollars in gas fees to get a five dollar payment over. It just wasn't feasible, it didn't work. So what did they do? Well, once they realized everything sucked, they thought, hey, there's an opportunity here. We can do something that's a little bit different. We can build a blockchain that is simple, scalable, and secure. And so Near Protocol was born. They pivoted to blockchain. Um, but what is NEAR? Uh, it's a difficult question to answer because over the past um, five years, it's certainly gone on a bit of a journey. It's gone down multiple tangents and it hadn't really found its niche. But I think that as of today, that has changed. So there's a few key points that you need to know. NEAR is not just a layer one blockchain. NEAR is an entire ecosystem an entire open web stack that allows you to build a decentralized future. So it's decentralized front ends as of last year, and it's not on this image because they won't give me a designer for whatever reason. It's data availability. It's fast finality with Eigenlayer. It's uh, ZK WebAssembly proofs with Polygon. And it's so, so, so much more. Um, Near is not an Ethereum killer, otherwise I would not be on this stage. I don't think there is such thing as an Ethereum killer because you cannot kill an idea which, whose time has come. Um, actually, we love Ethereum and we love everything that Vitalik has done. We love his whole package inside his mind, everything that he's achieved, um, we're really building on the back of. So where are we today? Well, when I gave a similar presentation last June, we had 25 million accounts. We had 900,000 monthly active, uh, more than 1,000 active projects, 315 million transactions, and one handsome social media lead. Some things don't change because we still have one handsome social media lead, but unfortunately for me, we didn't quite hit 100 million total accounts when I finished this slide this morning, but we have 99 million total accounts, more than 30 million of which are active, shitloads of active projects, don't know where to find that data anymore, and. Uh, almost a billion transactions, and I'm sure we'll cross over that threshold this year. Um, but first, let's point out what some of the problems are in Web3 and some of the problems that don't present themselves for the 29 million plus users of Nia every single day. So you ask your mom if we can have Web3, and she says, no, we have Web3 at home. But what does Web3 at home look like? Well, you download your browser extension, MetaMask, Phantom, whatever it might be, and then you have to write down 12, 12 words, your seed phrase, and you have to store that seed phrase under your bed or in a vault or tattoo it on the back of your eyelids. Um, and then you finally find the app you want to use, but it's not on the chain that you thought it was. So now you have to add a custom RPC. And once you've added a custom RPC, now you need to get your assets from Ethereum or wherever it might be onto that chain. 
And then finally, when you're ready to do it, you think, fuck me, I've forgotten what I was going to do. Um, that is not how mass adoption is going to be achieved, people. Mass adoption is not achieved by depositing liquidity on Uniswap. And if you're as proud of the ecosystem that we've all built as I am, it's time for us all to recognize that. Now, given the prominence of AI and the fact that AI, uh, the fact that Ilya Polisukin, the co-founder of NIR, is a lead AI researcher and built the T in ChatGPT, um, I asked ChatGPT, can you generate an image which embodies the following sentence? The promises of Web3 have not been delivered. And it delivered to me something rather remarkable, a beautiful piece of art. Whether or not you believe AI art is art, certainly seems it to me. And this is what it delivered. I'm excited to show it to you. We're Web3, the bonds odd were of the Philip Goethe. And I think that's pretty accurate in regards to the world of Web3 today. It's there, you can kind of get it if you jump through enough hoops, but it doesn't make that much sense. So, as of today, Nier is home to some of the largest apps in Web3, whether you want to believe it or not. I know there's a lot of people on Twitter that don't. Uh, we've got Kai Kai Ching, which is a micro payments app in uh, Southeast Asia with more than 29 million monthly active wallets. We have Sweatcoin and the Sweat Economy with more than 1.5 million. We have Play Ember with more than 1 million, a um, casual mobile phone games app. So how do we do it? It's pretty simple. We have stracked away all the bullshit. You don't need to know how to operate an Amazon web server to interact with Twitter. Uh, you don't need to know Mark Zuckerberg's home address in order to post on Facebook. So when you're using Nia, and when the vast majority of our uh, user base is using Nia, a seed phrase is optional, a wallet address is optional, and actually knowing what the fuck you're doing is completely optional. And that leads us on to the next big point and the next step in the evolution of Nia protocol, and I believe in the evolution of Web3, and that is chain abstraction. So for those of you who are familiar with the current standard of Web3, hopefully this will make some sense to you. Here's Bobby on the left. He goes to a unified user interface, which in this case is built on Nia's blockchain operating system. So that's going to be a decentralized front end. And then using the power of account aggregation, he can sign any transaction on any blockchain. So he has a Bitcoin wallet that is mapped to his Nier account, has an Arbitrum wallet that's mapped to his Nier account, a Polygon wallet that's mapped to his Nier account, any EVM wallet is mapped to his Nier account, the same for Solana. Cardano, well, maybe not Cardano, but whatever you want, you want to pick, uh, it can support it. And with this, we can build a truly unified layer across Web3. So if you have 5,000 USDC on Arbitrum and you want to swap it for Harry Potter, Obama, Dog, Polisuk, and Shiba Inu on Polygon, you can do that. And in fact, you don't need to use any bridges and you don't really even need to know which chain those assets lie on. Um, so I've got a very quick video that I'm going to show you. While I show you, I'm going to sit there uh, and look sternly. Um, it's about a minute long. Enjoy. How cool was that? It cost me a lot of money and a lot of my time, but it's worth it. And we're not going to watch it twice. Uh, we're going to move on to the most exciting part of today and the core of 
the uh, presentation. And that is two truths and a lie, people. So we're going to have an interactive session. I am going to show you three statements using the knowledge that you've learned now and the knowledge that you'll learn after. It's up to you to walk away from this session and determine which is the truth and which is a lie. So option one, Near Protocol boasts more than 15 million monthly active accounts. Is it truth or is it a lie? Uh, option two, Nia started life as an AI company way back in 2017. Is it a truth or is it a lie? And option three, Nia Protocol is a front for the globalist cabal to enter Web3, poison the blocks of all chains, turn the frogs gay, and has significant ties to the Rothschild family, thus killing chain maximalism. Now, I understand that you haven't had enough context on this last point, so I am going to give you it. Exhibit A, what do you see on the screen? For those of you who are not that way inclined, that is probably just the Nia Protocol logo. But as we all know, the Illuminati and the globalist elite like to hide clues directly in our face. So what happens if we turn it on the side? What does it look like? An hourglass? Is there anything else that you can see in there? I'm about to make it much easier for you. There it is, two triangles, two pyramids. Where else do we see triangles? Where else do we see pyramids? Well, let's take a look at the currency that might adorn each and every one of our wallets, the United States $1 bill that is backed by the might of the US military force. Let's turn it around. What do we see there? Do you see any triangles? Yes, you do. Let's take a closer look and a closer look. Oh, that's convenient, isn't it? It fits perfectly. I didn't write this. So it's quite clear to me that the globalist cabal, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the global elite are here to poison Web3. And this may or may not get me sacked from my job, but I'm about to expose some truths that the Near Foundation would never tell you. Exhibit B, last week, Lord Jacob Rothschild dies. He's dead. To some of you, that might be great news. Or to others, it could be terrible news. So this is leaked telegram messages from Ilya Polosukin, the co-founder of Nia Protocol. He made it clear to me that his boss, Jacob Rothschild, was the one who died. And he asked me, in the meantime, can I keep people in the know about chain abstraction? I said, absolutely, because I still need a paycheck. He told me to remind people that chain abstraction, when it's served very soon, People will be able to have access to true multi-chain accounts, cross-chain DeFi. They'll be able to sign any transaction on any blockchain with just one account, their near account, and will be able to bring smart contract functionality to otherwise dumb blockchains like Bitcoin, Litecoin, etc. Um, and he is still with Klaus Schwab, and he's planned to go to uh, Bohemian Grove sometime in July, I believe. Okay, Exhibit C, Ilya Polosukin. To the untrained eye, that might just sound like a name, a regular name, a Ukrainian name. Well, let's take a closer look at the man behind the project, right? This is a picture that you'll find if you search his name on Google. This is a doctored image. This image doesn't exist. This image was never taken. This is the real image when you run it through a software that regenerates images back to their original form. Do you notice anything yet? There it is again. It's everywhere. It's in front of us. He's making it clear that he is part of the globalist cabal. Let's take a closer look at the name. If any of you know anything about uh, the Illuminati, you will know that they love numerology. So let's put Ilya Polosukin through numerology. If we take the values of each of these letters, what do we get? I'm about to tell you. Ilya adds up conveniently to 9, Polosukin to 47. Altogether, Ilya Polosukin is 15 letters. I-L-L-I-A-P-O-L-O-S-U-K-H-I-N. Now. We need to subtract one I, as we always must, because that's the way the elite operate. So now we have Ilya at a value of eight, Polosukin at a value of 47, with a total number of letters of 14. If we cross out that I and take it from a nine to an eight, we give Ilya a value of eight, Polosukin a value of 47, with a total letters of 14. 47 times 14 is 658. 658 at eight is what? 666? It's clear, it's obvious. It's right in front of you. The Illuminati has infected Web3 and Nia is the bastion for it. And now my final piece of evidence. 
what does it say here? It's on every single one dollar bill. Those of you in the know, those of you who've been enlightened will already know that it says in Latin, novus ordo seclorum, new order of the ages, or otherwise known as a new world order, a one world order, a world order where we have 15 minute cities, one bank account, one world currency, and every single frog you've ever met and ever will meet has turned gay. Chain abstraction is the new world order of Web3. Chain abstraction will give you one crypto wallet. It will give you one unified Web3 experience, unified liquidity across all chains. It doesn't matter where your assets sit. It will taint the ossification of Bitcoin by bringing smart contract functionality, filthy smart contract functionality that Satoshi never wanted to non-smart contract powered chains. It will empower actual multi-chain accounts and it will leave you with little choice. This is the world that we currently live in. A fractured world where everybody can be happy in their own little departments. And this is the Pangea that Near Protocol envisions. It is taking us back millions of years to the prehistoric times when there was just one continent, one Pangea, and one Web3. Is that what we really want? I don't think so. To recap. Near Protocol is not an Ethereum killer. It has never marketed itself as an Ethereum killer. In fact, I consider it an Ethereum lover. If you are building the open web, it doesn't matter what chain you're building on, we love you and we always will. And it doesn't matter which horses go across the finish line when we revolutionize this world, Near will be there to back you up. Near is not just a layer one blockchain. It is so much more. It's everything you see on the screen. It's data availability, which is cheaper than Celestia. Kidding. Um, it is uh, ZK WAS improvers with uh, the Polygon team. It is fast finality. It's decentralized front ends. It is chain abstraction, which to my former points, is a plan by the globalists to deliver a new world Web3 order where multi-chain accounts are actually multi-chain. Liquidity is completely unified. You never need to worry about the thousand layer twos and roll-ups that are being built every single day because you need one account to access them all. Smart contract functionality is brought to dumb blockchains, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and the rest will be able to build incredible things around it. And there is no bridges in Pangea. That is one unified content where we are all together. You just sign a transaction and it happens. So that's the end of my rant. I'm not prepared to take any questions. If you want to claim the NFT, scan the QR code. It does ask for your email address. You'll have to deal with that. And thank you very much. And let's uh, fight the new world order together. God bless.